Hello and welcome to another installment of Plagued by Visions. My name is Juan and today we have quite a peculiar title to review both in terms of its content but also its publishing history and the way in which it eventually made its way to me. So the title in question is The Journey by William Willie Wilson. It is actually not yet released at the time of me uploading this review. Uh, it is going to be released soon by Henbane Press and that's all the information that I was given. I haven't been given a specific date of release yet. Uh, however, the interesting thing about this title is that despite me having read it as an advanced reading copy, the manuscript was actually composed sometime in the 1970s. So William Willie Wilson, who actually passed away fairly recently, uh, a fact which has contributed to this renewed interest in his life and his hidden repertoire, uh, he wrote the journey back in the years of the horror boom that was beginning to take off in the paperback market during the decade of the 70s. Uh, and he tried to have his work published by the major presses of the time that dominated the horror paperback market, such as Random House and Simon and & Schuster, etc. But his work was actually rejected and downright almost condemned by publishers and editors of the time for being just way too graphic. And now, of course, horror publishers of that time weren't exactly shy about printing explicit content during the 70s, especially for horror paperbacks of this nature. So that should tell you that the journey is really set apart from this other pulpier, more exploitative and frivolous tradition in a really fascinating way. And, and of course, more on that later. <laughs> So after facing all of this rejection, Wilson essentially disowned the manuscript and, and was thought to have given up writing entirely, but it emerged fairly recently that he actually ended up making quite a lucrative writing career writing cozy mysteries under a pseudonym, which essentially means that he abandoned writing horror and transgressive fiction entirely. The, the manuscript itself for the journey, while not considered lost per se, was sort of tied down by a myriad of strange copyright and publishing complications, uh, paired of course with the fact that Wilson himself had just no intentions whatsoever of having it see the light of day. However, there seems to have been a very tiny but quite dedicated subset of horror fans who had heard of the journey and its infamous rejection at all famous publishers, uh, because apparently there was an early advertisement of some sort put out by one of these major presses that listed all of the prospective horror titles that were going to be put out in whatever given year, and, and Wilson's The Journey was listed in one of these materials, which means that the manuscript made it as far as being edited and even receiving some kind of light production and advertisement before they just pulled the plug on it. So when fans noted the discrepancies between this advertised catalog and what was actually published published in that year, uh, you know, noticing that the journey was nowhere to be found, all manner of wild speculation and mythology started to surface among horror fans regarding the novel, and especially once it was discovered that it remained unpublished precisely due to its graphic nature, all manner of theories just started booming out. There were rumors about just exactly how graphic the content of the book was and information was actually leaked by one of the editors working for Simon & Schuster at the time who confirmed that Indeed, it was the graphic content that led to its eventual rejection. In particular, something that the editor named the throating scene, which became sort of mythologized by horror fans, you know, you know, much in the same way that the turtle scene in Cannibal Holocaust or the, the piggy scene in Deliverance are. So this light but insistent interest in the work of Wilson throughout the decades thankfully persisted so much as to have eventually led Henbane Press to seek it out and following Wilson's passing and finally have it delivered to us in all its uncensored and graphic glory. As far as I know, some light editing and revisions were made, but only as far as syntax, so the graphic nature of it is virtually untouched. So after Henbane Press reached out to me and after hearing of this fucking wild story behind its elusive origin, I quite enthusiastically said, fuck yeah, I'll review that. <laughs> and I'm happy to say that I read the journey the way that William Willie Wilson originally intended for it to be published. So I guess the critical issue in everyone's mind is, does the book live up to its hype and reputation as being extremely graphic and disturbing? Now, of course, myself being a seasoned veteran and reading <laughs> disturbing books of this kind, well, I can say that I have read worse. I will also say that I do believe the book's reputation is absolutely warranted. 
Moreover, I would say that we're dealing with quite a different caliber of graphic violence here than the kind one might be used to when it comes to more commercial titles of horror of this era. I believe that Wilson had a much more peculiar set of influences when writing this than horror writers tend to have, and that really bleeds through in his style and the way that he presents violence specifically. I won't go too much into detail as far as the actual plot of the novel, given that it is fairly short, although quite dense, but, but not in the way that becomes tedious or hard to follow. So essentially we have a strange journey of sorts that our main character embarks in, followed by a series of at first seemingly unrelated vignettes depicting all manner of atrocities that eventually intertwined at the end in a very, very interesting way. <laughs> Just think like Desaad's 120 Days of Sodom mixed with Jodorowsky's Holy Mountain, complete with all the manner of bizarre sexual hellscapes that you would uh, expect from such a meeting of the minds. <laughs> this is all speculation, of course, but the first thing I want to say is that I couldn't help but notice that there's a freneticism to the way the plot moves along. There's the kind of feverish mechanical writing that reminded me so much of the style of Hubert Selby Jr. And in this comparison to Hubert Selby Jr., I think that's also where the density kind of comes in you know it's not a density of the kind that it's just information overload or you know just overwroughtness of sequences of events it's more like the density stems from just how meticulously detailed so much of the violence is in this very sort of a weirdly obsessive way i mean if you've read something like the room you'll have an idea of what we're dealing with here i mean th there's a there's a style there that i think is often missing in a lot of works of this kind. I think uh, William Willie Wilson really uh, tackled the, the way that horror should be written, at least in my mind, and, and what made it so enjoyable and reminded me of some of my favorite horror authors, such as Jack Ketchum. So if you've ever read any Jack Ketchum, you will know like the kind of style that he delves into is that uh, he'll write all manner of exploitative horror scenes and, and you know, of course just steeped in in, in, in sex in a way that's just meant to be titillating uh, but what really sets Ketchum apart in my mind and now of course the journey as well is that there's um, an interest in in giving us sort of like the interior perspective of the characters so so as you can imagine here in the journey in this journey that we're taking it into um, there's death after death after death and and, and these deaths sort of uh, escalate uh, both in terms of you know the, the the grandiose ornate detail in which they are presented uh, but also just in sheer numbers but what what i really enjoyed about it um though maybe enjoyed is the wrong word but it's that uh, wilson is always interested much like ketchum in, in taking us into the 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 mind of of the victims and sort of turning the atrocity and turning the, the, the horrificness of it into a subjective experience. Uh, if you've read something like Off Season or Cover or The Girl Next Door, you will know that uh, whenever there's a, a murder about to happen, whenever there's a horrific scene about to unfold, uh, Ketchum chooses to uh, tell it to us uh, from the perspective of the character that it is sort of happening to. It's not just a, a detached, methodical description of the scene and, and the gore, although that is present as well. But but we'll hear, you know, the, the fear that the situation elicits in the character's mind. We will hear about uh, the pain, the struggle that they are undergoing. And, and when we have that shift in perspective, uh, it becomes this really, really disconcerting and, and off-putting experience in a way that's not meant to be, you know, gratifying for somebody seeking sort of the, the horror genre thrills uh, instead it becomes heavy with 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 the impact uh, it becomes real there's there's a there's a real heaviness to it that that i find that wilson also really 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 endeavored in in portraying throughout the the unfolding of the of these events that he sort of crammed into the journey and and also I will say, you know, speaking of Jack Ketchum, who of course uh, wrote in the sort of prototype of what would eventually unfold as the splatterpunk movement, etc. Uh, I think that this book sort of predating that era of splatterpunk and eventual extreme horror is really interesting in a way that also reminds me of Hog by Samuel R. Delaney in that these are works that are not operating within 
a set tradition of horror, uh, but you know, they feel visionary in the way that they just explicitly describe violence in such a carnivalesque way uh, and and you know it's been said of of something like hog before that you know if hog uh, which has a very similar publishing history to the one of the journey in that you know it didn't it was written in the 60s but didn't find its publication year until the 90s but had it been introduced to the literary work back when it was first written a lot of splatterpunk and extreme horror titles would feel sort of irrelevant <laughs> at this point just because you know, everything that could have been done was done by that story. And I feel like Wilson uh, really sort of uh, tragically fits into that uh, significance, into that sort of literary significance as well. And I say tragically because, of course, sadly, we're not seeing his work until today. But had it been published back then, I think that it would have really impacted this tradition of splatterpunk in a very interesting way. And I think uh, it would have made a lot of what eventually came after it in terms of, uh, you know, this pushing the envelope to see how far you can take graphic detail uh, would have made a lot of those journeys irrelevant <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, so, so I think uh, that it is just a phenomenal sort of almost visionary work of the way that that violence would be treated on the page uh, for years to come, especially within this horror paperback world uh, from which it was rejected. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Uh, had had Wilson just waited just a few more years uh, to, to submit it, I think that uh, its narrative would have been quite different. Of course, like I said, I'm being uh, deliberately uh, vague about the details of the plot just because I think it's a journey that you have to experience for yourself. Uh, but I did mention that what the editor named as the throating scene uh, as being one of the reasons why it was rejected from publishing. Uh, the throating scene, I think, it comes later in the book and is really kind of the... There's a there's an extensive lead-up to it. Uh, I don't want to say what it is because you really just have to... You really just have to witness it for yourself. But I think that scene paired with an earlier scene that involves dogs and eyeballs... And that's all I want to say on that. Uh, I think that there, there's definitely some sequences in here that will still manage to shock sort of the more untrained eye, who, who, people who might not be as used to uh, experiencing titles of this kind. I mean, even I, like I said, as someone who's read quite a fair bit of of extreme horror and, and, and the transgressive fiction, there were passages that made me go, oh my God, what the fuck? Uh, just because, there, again, it, it takes you in that internal sort of uh, psychological turmoil of, of the characters, even though there's a lot of that, you know, uh, just simple bags of meat in terms of characters, you know, uh, cannon fodder that's just introduced to, to have more bodies to to have at to 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 dismember to to disintegrate to melt into you know a pulp on the floor uh, but uh, like i said it's it's always like this deliberate intent to to portray the characters uh, as being real in some way and that becomes really off putting it's almost like you know there there's a cruelty to the narrative that is unshakable where 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 wilson you know insists on uh, having you see the humanity of someone and then having you see uh, the, the fragility of that humanity, the fragility of the human body. Um, there's a lot to process there. Uh, I can't say that a lot of it was written with any intent other than to shock, to dare. But I think, as you know, as I've stated multiple times on this channel, I think that that endeavor to just shock and upset and, and rile up uh, sens sensibilities, I think that is a commendable endeavor as well. So uh, those are my thoughts. I mean, there's there's a lot to say, but but I think that there's going to have to be another discussion once this uh, book finally makes its way to the public and, and you know that way with having more people be familiar with what it's about having read it uh, maybe a, a spoiler filled uh, discussion of it uh, would be more appropriate but all I can say is that this work is phenomenal I am so glad that it was rescued from oblivion <laughs> i'm so happy that uh, and also like i said a, a bit sad that it's 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 seeing the light of day today because i i really do think that had this seen the light of day in decades previous uh, we would have a very different narrative as to what horror is <laughs> in terms of you know it's 
its journey towards developing more and more graphic and violent uh stories but but also i think that you know wilson really really should have received a lot more respect and recognition during during his lifetime uh, so yeah th this is going to be coming out very soon from handbane press like i said i just wanted to get out this review and let you know you know look forward to it it is quite something. Uh, I will say, if you watch this channel, you know, are familiar with the kind of literature that we cover here, you'll probably handle it with no problem. But but if you're new to this kind of stuff, I mean, it definitely, it goes there. It goes there. It, <laughs> so, that's all I have to say on The Journey by William Willie Wilson. Other than, you know, when it comes out, get your copies if you know what's good for you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, thank you for watching. I hope you're all well. Continue to stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.